Right, so we've looked at various lures, various soft lures, shads, uh, paddle tails and curly tail grubs, um, the Zeman range, a little bit of, bit of chat about those, little crayfish and things like creature baits. Uh, you don't need to have, I see some people carrying millions and millions of lures, you don't need that many. I, I catch fish and I don't have that many lures. So get a few, don't complicate it. Give yourself options to fish along the top, fish mid-water, fish on the bottom. A couple of, you know, maybe like the Zeman range that's sticking up with TIDs, that's a good option to have. Um, but don't complicate it, don't get millions. It's good to collect different loads. You don't have to get Zeman and Relax Copy too, but they're the, they're the ones that I often use. Like say, Rapture range, you've got a good selection. I've got a massive selection, actually. There's a, um, there's a Realistic Shads that I've, I've used. Uh, I've got loads of those in the bag. Um, what else is there? Well, all of the companies, you know, are, are, all, are all fine. There's just loads. So what we're going to look at is some other ways of fishing things. So uh, Weedless set up. Um, Obviously this time of year you've got a lot of weed about, but um, weedless is also good for snag proof, or not snag proof, but less getting snagged up less. So what we'll do is we'll look at rigging these up. And I've only just got these, so that's quite a, quite absent I've got these, but you'll see I've got a different selection of like worm hooks and offset hooks. Um, if you want to get really technical and get into it, there's loads and loads of videos. The bass, the bass fishing videos in America, you know, um, they're, they're using all these stuff and there's loads of information and I'm not going to try to copy it or you know I'm just going to show you basics because that's all you really need to know and know why you're doing it there's weighted weighted offset hooks with like a lead already on it right so we're going to pick a low what low should we pick let's pick one of these these rapture ones it's a three inch swing grubby, grubby. Don't know how you pronounce it. Swing grubby. It's got that's quite a long bodied short curly tail, so it's slightly different to the other curly tails. So we're gonna look at fishing that weedless. So what you wanna do, you need to find you what you'll actually see on some of these lows. I can see that on there. It's got a little bit of a split in. It's like an offset split actually, it's not, it doesn't go all the way through, same on the other side. And that's there for the reason, we'll have a look at why. So I need to find a hook that fits. So you just have a, have a look, that's a 1-0, oh, that's probably too big. We've got an here, that's a 1-0. Oh. Um, oh, come on, this is where my organisation pants. That's a size 2, that looks pretty good. I've not fished either of these, so we're looking for a hook that's the right sort of size. In fact, I'm going to try and get an offset size too. Wide gap. Why have we got wide gap? What's that? Two. That's what I want. So. You just want to roughly measure it up, sort of size-wise, and if it looks about right, you can probably go even smaller with that one, I think. But we'll make it with this one, and we'll see what it looks like. So it's like it's, it's trial and error. I've not used either of these, so so what you've got to picture is that that it's not easy to see with fingers and thumbs everywhere. That is going to be somewhere like this on your lure when it's when it's rigged up. So you've got to picture which way around you want your lure and I want the white bit to the bottom and the pink bit to the top which means you're going to stick your hook in but as with the with the, um, the shads you went right through the body and came out just before the tail this time you're going to go in and then straight back out like this Yep. so basically it's only just hooked on and then you're going to slide it all the way on and then twist it round so then basically your nose is going to come on to there and then what you've got now is you'll see this this bit's just flapping about a bit but you're going to go back through the body with this so you need to work out 
it's a, bit, it's a little bit fiddly, and once you, when you're first doing it, it's a bit of bit of trial and error. But once you get used to it, basically, find the centre. If you've got, like I said, some laws are showing you exactly where to do it because I've got lines and things and offset bits. So when I come back through, now what you see there, I've probably just gone a little bit too far because it's cut sort of bent there. So you can just take it back out and just move it up a little bit and then try again. And that looks a little bit better and what you'll see now is you've now got this bit of hook sticking out. Don't worry about that, it's not gonna not gonna affect your presentation, it's not gonna put fish off. And what you've got here, that little that little recess that's on this lure, which is designed there for a, for a reason, has got the point of your hook in there, and it's hidden. So I can run my finger down there, I'm not going to hook up, do it now, fingers touching it. So you can see that, so you can drag that across all sorts of things, and that will not hook up onto anything. Or, you know, nine times out of ten it won't hook anything. Um, and what happens then is basically when a fish comes onto it, fish bites down, and it basically put, pushes the lure onto the hook just like this, sorry, just like that, and then you hook up. Um, again, if you look on the, um, the Xander video, uh, Jacob will, will catch you on the weedless setup. It says, it says local waters, he fishes all kind of waters, and he fishes this kind of setup with a, um, a weedless, like the off offset, the wide gap hooks. Um, wide gate, whichever you want to pronounce it, wide gate hooks, um, and he's, he's dragging that along the bottom, and it's a really good, me really good method, like I say, it's good for, I won't say totally weedless, but it helps you going through, especially grasses and things like that, and the long string is not a weed, that just gets onto everything, but it just helps you, great for it, chucking it in cover, you've got a cheap low, alright the hooks are a little bit more expensive, but a cheap low, um, you can throw in a little bit more cover, you can drag it over things, if you do get in, you can twang it out a little bit. If you don't, as long as you don't, you set the hooks into it. Um, and you'll find that you can fish those with nothing on it, really light. Or you can, where have we gone? You can fish these ones. I've not got many sizes in these. But the bigger lures, that's just a bigger offset hook with the weight on so you can fish them with a weight underneath so you know like I say you just obviously want to get the size to suit your lure or the lure to suit your hook you can fish those ones and another one as you saw in the video again and it's something I've been using for quite a few months now and a lot of people are using if I can find them is those bad boys those bad boys I need to buy some more actually and this is uh, uh, not easy for me to say because I'm rubbish at pronouncing stuff. But Chirabushka, Chibrushka, Chirab. It's foreign. So the Cheb weights. Um, and what we'll do is we'll look at, get, this, get a small one out. So I've only got a small, um, small load out. Spin that round. And that. That is your weight to go with this weedless rig. So, what we need to do, it's all fingers and thumbs in the way. So you pull that out and you'll see your lead. Come on, fingers. Your lead's got a split in it. And this, it's rather like a paper clip. Just slots in it. Like so. And you see that's a two gram, I'll turn the way around. It's a two gram, come on camera, two gram. So I can really fish that really light, on a really light, light setup. And basically, that pulls out. And then this. Goes on, come on fingers. Onto there like that. Yep. 
and then you slide your back your weight back on to there like this and I've got a clip somewhere so then basically Imagine this is tied onto your uh, onto your wire trace or your fluorocarbon, and obviously just hook on. And away you go. Now that weedless setup, got a wire trace on. You can cast it. It's going to flutter down. It's going to come down a little. It's going to drop down a little bit um, slower than a big ten grams you get. So it's going to flutter down nice and thick at the bottom, and you can just. Twitch it up, back down, up, back down, you can just slow, as in the Xander fishing, sometimes it was just that, I'm not even joking, it was just that across the bottom, yep, really just dragging it, leaving it, pausing it, yep, but experiment, you don't have to drag it along the bottom, you can fish it, let's say, you know, we're fishing it just off the bottom, and it's coming along and it's a, it's a branch, you feel it at the branch, because you've got, you've got your braid, your nice sensitive rod, and it just drags it over top, and you can just keep dragging it and dragging it, see if it hooks my finger down live on the film. Keep dragging it, it's not actually hooking up. Drag a, drag a jig head and what happens is your jig head turns, like this, I'll do it that way. Jig head turns, digs in, and that is nasty. And that's a snag, 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 and you're losing that load every time. Um, when that set up? drag it over, over all sorts of objects and don't forget you know the perch especially but most most fish the perch especially are living down there near those those snags and if you can get that low down into those snags and you know 90 well 95 times out of 100 let's say get it back you've got to increase your chances of hooking up with a big fish because we all know that the, that the fish are living down there um, around all these features that's a, that's a great way. So there's loads of loads of um, uh, loads that you can use that on. You don't have to use it on a, um, a curly tail, on a grub. Although I'm going to do it next time I go fishing, I want to go fishing now. Um, you can use it on. Oh, that's another big curly tail. But I'll see. I'll show you actually. That's one good thing you saw in the, the Zander video previously. Different hooks. What I've actually been out and bought after I, after I spoke with uh, Jacob is some thinner gauge hooks. These are great for pike. I will catch perch on them. But um, I've got some thinner gauge hooks. And those are going to work a lot better for, for hooking up. i um, got loads of sizes. Uh, you can do it with shads. Now, a... Hey, what have we got? So what, what we'll look at is, let's get those off screen, so look at, let's look at this, relax copy or shad. And this is where you need to experiment with your lures. What size is that? That might be easy, that's a 1-0. Oh, oh, So this looks a good size to fish with a relaxed copy to a shad. So again, you want to go in the nose, into the nose, but then straight back out. You're only going through a little bit of a little bit of the head. Slide it along. Right to the front. Twist it round. Pop the nose onto there so it's a nice neat fit there and you can see that looks a quite a good good fit you know, just twist your lure a little bit and poke it through now I've not actually fished a weedless setup on a relaxed copy or shad but again you can see like that again you can see that's gonna work but what you've got to watch for now the rapture, rapture laws, which we'll have a look next, 
if you look at how much clearance there is below this belly to there compared to this one for example so if you look at this when the when the perch bites on it and it pops through you've got all that hook that's going to poke up and stick out because you've got a really you know quite a shallow profile though there what you've got on a on a relaxed copy to a shad is quite a deep round of belly so that hook is not going to pop up as much because it's bumping in to that plastic and it can't go any further so you can see there that's really restricting your hook up so you need to experiment with which lures will work with your weedless rigs and which rope. Now what you'll find on some lures at this point I know um, like the Savage Gear uh, four, soft four players things like that I've got a plenty of other lures as well they've got like a split from this point to that point they've got actually a, a, a pre-molded split inside so then basically that hook would go through so what I'm sort of saying to you here is that'll work a little bit but it won't work as good as if it were on a jig head like that so these lures are more designed for a jig head so you want to use this fat bellied any fat belly shad really on a, on a jig head and uh, anything with a slimmer profile a, a, short, a shorter thinner body you can use on a weedless a weedless rig so don't just um, don't just stick your jig heads on or your, your offset hooks and, and things like that on a, on a lure without looking at first how it, how it all fits together and how it all works think about how it's going to hook up how it's going to uh, be weedless and that sort of thing and, you know, take a bit of time to set them up. Uh, some of the lads, you know, um, soft boxes full of full of lures, and you know, on an evening, spend a bit of time just um, rigging them all up, so it's easier to do it. You know, put some hooks on it. Uh, I tend to do it on bank because I never know what lure I'm going to use and what size, but then what weight. You know, but again, with a with a chub heads, the chubrushka, I've got two gram and I think they're about six. Is it eight? Yeah, six it says. So I've got a bit of variety. Um, slightly heavier and slightly shallower. Um, so what we'll do is we'll look at doing a bigger lure. These ones again, we'll all look at these rapture ones. Exciter shad. Got me excited about it. These are gonna be just like proper perch killers. So Really long, thin profile body. It's got a really th thin tail there, so that's mis that because it's got a really thin tail. It's telling me that straight away a really slow retrieve, and that that don't take much to get that working. So you can use these on a really slow retrieve. So again, we need to look at what sort of weight we're going to use. You don't have to go heavy. Sorry, what sort of hook we're going to use? You don't have to go heavy with a with your brush gear weight. Um, got the 8 gram on there so let's say I'm fishing slightly deeper water got a bit of wind I've got a I've got a less um, sensitive setup I need to have a little bit more weight on it so again we're gonna look at you need to have your work out which way is up which way is down and then basically you can basically go through its chin if you, that's the easiest thing to think, think about go for its chin there's already a, there's already a split in the body one so through the chain work it along pop it up on top there look at where look at where it's coming out and look seem to quite fit right on there that's it so you got a nice fit on the nose and then we're going to look at where it comes out on the body basically again it's got this one you can see the grooves on this one so that's going to help you straight away on your weedless setup just put it through and that's just absolutely perfect again you can run your finger over that I'm trying not to stick it in your finger run your finger over that and it's weedless you'll find in, you'll find with some lows Probably just can't see it on this, but on some, that's got a that's got a little recess, so it's already there to hide it. 
on some loads there's no recess. So just all you need to do is just sort of push your if it'll work, push your soft plastic a little bit, dig the point in and it'll actually stick into your plastic. Um, it'll just hold it a little bit in and then it'll still it'll still come off when a fish grabs it. Yeah, and again that's another weedless setup. Great setup for fishing, you know, deeper water. And that's a that's a perch, that's a perch killer if I've ever seen it. Look at that. Really, really slim body. Um and like I say, experiment. Because we've got one thing that you could do. Is actually I'll have to get a fresh yard. Let me get a fresh yard. So we'll use the same, same shad. I like that. And what size hook do they have? Must have been 2 I think. Yeah, 2 -oh. I'll not put it on a chair, but you don't need to put it on a chair rig again. But basically, this time, instead of doing it through the, through the, the chain of it, same same place, but sort of come out, come out the side. Slide it round again, twist it. And you've seen me fish the seen me fish um, soft loads on the side before, especially with Savage Gear. Four players, small four players. And that's paddle tail on its side, so it's going to give you a different different look. And float it about, looks a bit, little bit more like a dying fish. And like I said before, you can just nick the point in to give you a little bit more protection to make it weedless. And the perch is going to grab that, boom, that's going to pop through in there. And a uh, great method. Been um, been doing pretty well on the on the chair with your brush. On the chair rig, been doing alright on the chair rig, um, and it's it's easy. So get a couple of weights, don't get loads. Just get a couple of different sizes, three, five, ten, something like that. I've got two and eight, <laughs> whatever. That's only two and six, but yeah, I can get another ten. You know, but you can scale that up. Um, there's no reason why you can't use that on, uh, you know, three, four, five inch shads, six inch shads, that sort of thing. Uh, pike fishermen. Um, you know, you've got some, you've got all these different soft shads that's, you know, this sort of size, five, six, seven, eight inches. You can rig it up exactly the same with the offset hooks. Um, you can use the, the, the weighted ones, you know, the weight at the bottom. You can use that a lot, that one. Or you can, you can use a, a, a chair. You don't have to go with a massive, you know, chair bed. You have 10 gram chair bed, five gram, and use your big, big soft shads. Um, it's going to work. Not the deep belly ones, more of a flat, you know, thinner profile, not, not as deep lows. Uh, 